Did you know that nearly half of all dementia cases worldwide could be prevented or delayed? Now that's according to the latest 2024 update from the Lancet Commission on Dementia. I'm Dr. O'Donovan, a medical doctor caring for individuals with dementia here in the UK. And I've also cared for both of my own grandmothers who had Alzheimer's disease. So I do know firsthand how devastating this disease can be. Which is why in this video, I'm going to take you through 14 evidence-based ways to reduce your risk of developing dementia, something that I personally take really seriously given my own family's history of dementia. Now, the first tip that I want to discuss actually starts quite early, and that's access to quality education in childhood, which builds what we call cognitive reserve. Now, this is the brain's ability to adapt and bounce back from damage later in life. Now, if you're past school age, please don't worry, lifelong learning still counts. So keep your brain stimulated through reading, puzzles, or learning something new, be it a language, instrument, or a new skill. It doesn't really matter what you do, it's that new process of learning a new skill or new concept that is really important. Now, the next important tip is to protect your hearing. Hearing loss is now considered one of the strongest midlife risk factors for dementia. If you've noticed difficulty hearing, especially in your 40s, or 50s, please get it checked. Now you can usually book a hearing assessment very easily and they're typically low cost. Now here in the UK, you could visit a high street chain such as Boots or Specsavers or speak to your GP about it. And if you need hearing aids, then it's really important you wear them. They may not just help your hearing, but also protect your brain too. Now the third risk factor is actually loneliness and social isolation in later life, which have been linked to a higher risk of dementia. So it's really important to stay connected to others. This could be through friends, community groups, volunteering, or simply regular conversations with people who you care about. Now, personally, I'm always really happy when I see groups of older people at coffee shops, perhaps they're out on walking trips or meeting at church, because not only do they usually look like they're having a great time, but I also know that this is potentially helping reduce their risk of developing dementia. And I have noticed this typically when I'm traveling to places like Italy or Portugal, and I see groups of older people in the evening out having a coffee. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, the fourth risk factor is traumatic brain injury, especially concussions. Now, even from a single fall or accident, this can increase the risk of dementia. It's therefore really important to always wear helmets for cycling, use seat belts when you're out in the car, and try and reduce fall hazards at home. And if you engage in contact sports like rugby, to be aware of the potential link between concussion and developing dementia in later life. And I've included more information on this particular topic in the description box of the video if you want to learn more. Now, my next piece of advice is that if you smoke, please consider quitting. Smoking, as you probably know, harms blood vessels all over the body, including those in the brain. Now, quitting at any age improves circulation, it lowers stroke risk, and you can reduce your dementia risk in turn. Now, your GP, your doctor, or your local pharmacy can help you find support to stop, and I've included a link to another video, which is a 10-step guide to help you quit in the description box of this video. Now, if you are watching, you're tempted to quit, please do so. In fact, post your quit date in the comment section of this video. It's much more likely when you commit to a date to quit that you'll successfully do so. Now, the next important modifiable risk factor that you can address to help lower dementia risk is high blood pressure. Hypertension, especially in midlife, is linked to smaller brain volume and increased risk of stroke and vascular dementia. So it's important to keep your blood pressure under 130 over 80, Regular checks, a healthy diet, exercise, and medication if needed can make a big difference in helping you achieve this. Now, the next important point is to keep your weight in check. Obesity, particularly in midlife, also increases the risk of insulin resistance and inflammation, both of which are linked to cognitive decline. A balanced diet and regular movement can help reduce this risk. And as ever, I've included useful links and resources on weight management support services in the description box of this video to help you achieve this. Now, the next important point is to eat for your brain. A Mediterranean-style diet, so one rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, oily fish, and healthy fats like olive oil, has been associated with better cognitive function. Now, importantly, try to limit processed foods, saturated fat, and excess sugar. The ninth tip 
is physical activity. Now, physical inactivity is a major preventable risk factor. Regular exercise, even brisk walking, improves blood flow to the brain and boosts brain plasticity. Now, it's important to aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise each week, or something like 10,000 steps walking a day if you can manage it. Other exercise does count, however, so things like swimming, cycling, or anything that you enjoy to get your body moving for at least 20 to 30 minutes a day gets a big thumbs up from me. Now, the next point is really important and something I come across in clinic fairly often, and that is excessive alcohol increases your risk of stroke, brain shrinkage, and dementia. So it's really important to stay within the recommended units per week for the country that you're in. Here in the UK, it's 14 units a week. Again, I've included a link to a free tool that you can use in the description box of this video to help you calculate how many units you might be drinking. But my advice always is try to drink in moderation if you drink at all. Now, the next point is that long-term untreated depression is linked to an increased risk of cognitive decline. So if you're struggling with mood, please don't suffer in silence. Effective treatments do exist from therapy to medication, and seeking early help can protect both your mental as well as your brain health. Now, type 2 diabetes, especially when poorly managed, does also increase dementia risk through damage to blood vessels and insulin resistance in the brain. Now, controlling your blood sugar, especially through diet, activity, and if needed, medication and regular reviews can help reduce that risk. Now, uncorrected vision loss, especially from cataracts or diabetic eye disease, is now recognized as a dementia risk factor. So it's really important to attend regular eye checks, wear your glasses, and seek treatment if needed. Cataract surgery, for example, may reduce risk. Finally, high cholesterol contributes to vascular damage and may also affect proteins that are linked to Alzheimer's disease. Lifestyle changes such as frequent exercise and the healthy diet that we spoke about earlier, and some medications can reduce this risk and protect both your heart and your brain. So that's it, 14 lifestyle and health factors that together could prevent or delay up to 45% of dementia cases globally. Now, of course, not all of these are within our individual control, but many are, and even small changes can add up over time. So to end this video, I want to ask you, which one of these are you going to implement today? Will it be booking a hearing or vision test, or perhaps you're going to commit to quit smoking? Now, let me know which one you're going to take action on in the comments section, and I'll send you a message of support. Finally, please remember, it's never too early or too late to start looking after your brain.